It feels like it was a long time ago that I actually sat down and cast the first game of this series on Sideshow. Nablime against Hamster. Nablime ended up dropping that first match. It was a pretty epic one because it had a lot of back and forth and a lot of tech. I'm told that the rest of these matches might go a little bit quicker. Let's see what's up. Now, since the last time that we ended up seeing uh, these two players, uh, Sideshow itself was updated to lose the recolor, of course. We've got the orange Zerg in the bottom right and the Sunglow Terran in the top left. That's Hamster and Nablime. Uh, I have been leveling up the production. I have been making hype videos and etc. So you can expect some pretty cool stuff in playoffs of Ascension number six, which both of these players are in. They not only competed, but they also got through to playoffs. Uh, so the group stage is already concluded at the time of recording. This is the uh, 6th of November. Welcome back to the cast over spree. Uh, I usually end up taking a day or two off after uh, casting the group stage in particular, uh, but just generally when you're casting a tournament, Sometimes you don't always end up also casting the games, although maybe I can try to have enough of a backlog of matches here, uh, of casts recorded, so that that doesn't necessarily have to happen. I will say, however, as a Quasith pool is coming down for Hamster, that this is an interesting matchup to be casting games that were played before the tournament, because for my money, both of these players are actually pretty legit, and I should expect them to meet each other at some point. They are on the same side of the bracket. So for example, if Hamster beats Biddy Bee in their upcoming quarterfinal, and then Nablime beats Three Crow, which he is favored in, I would have to say that this is gonna be a banger of an upper semifinal match. The last tournament we had, we had one upper semifinal that was a little bit on the more fraudulent side, I guess you could say, where it was, um, you know, we had, I think it would have been Mystery Meet against Three Crow, or something like that happened. Or maybe it was Mystery Meet against DF. I can't really quite remember. I think it was Three Crow, though. Either way, though, it was, uh, you know, one of those situations where, you know, Mystery Meet is clearly favored in the matchup. I think it might have been a 3-0. Then we look over at the uh, other side of the bracket, and that was, I believe that would have been, like, a, a shambler Biddy Bee match or something like that. Uh, anyway, like, the, the upper semifinals were not as uh, epic or convincing. Or maybe that was actually the uh, Shambler versus Keen or something like that. Either way, like, one of those matches was cool, and the other one, maybe not so much. Uh, it's a situation where, you know, only one of them ended up being super epic and, and interesting, and the other one was maybe a little bit too one-sided. Now I feel like our upper semis are going to be pretty good, because it's the winner of Shambler uh, and uh, Keen, both of whom strong Zerg players, uh, going up against the likely uh, winner of the matchup of uh, Mystery Meat versus the Beaver is going to be Mystery Meat, right? So projecting forward, I feel like we're going to get a pretty interesting sort of top five in this tournament, where the uh, the fifth best players, like the, the players one through five in terms of the placings, are going to be pretty legit ones. So it's cool to see Hamster emerge as a challenger. And honestly, I think Three Crow has also been practicing a lot of strats. So even that could be kind of interesting. Now, uh, I think Hamster has quietly won the game because... Uh, Masons are not good combat units, Nablime. So uh, just absolutely blown out of the water before I could really even comment too much on the fact that Nablime decided to go for a ministry before building a maverick. Hmm. Well, if it were up to me, I probably wouldn't have included that one in the particular uh, repertoire there, but I guess they just wanted to show off that you can indeed rush on Sideshow. So, we have the Brass Zerg of Hamster, now up 2-0 in the series, against the Electric Blue Nebelheim. Uh, that is, of course, the Terran. Uh, so, yeah, obviously this was just sort of practice. It was pre-release practice. It was using the new Quasilisk. It was using the new lack of uh, tech add-ons and stuff. And then, obviously, uh, alongside all of that, checking out the new map pool, checking out Sideshow. Isn't that lovely? Uh, I obviously did author this map. I feel like it's in a pretty good state overall. There was something that I noticed that I, I do remember doing intentionally, which was putting the geyser one tile further away from the town center than it needed to be. Uh, but I think that will change in an update if Sideshow ends up making it back into the next tournament map pool. Uh, which, you know, I don't think we'll have as much of like an egregious, uh, or uh, not egregious, but uh, I would say dramatic change of the map pool going in to Ascension number seven. Uh, but I could always be wrong. Maybe I make some more maps that I feel like are really good. Maybe uh, with some technical wizardry, Vik is able to extend or improve the minimap scaling, which is kind of holding back Pantheon and Pendulum, uh, as well as maybe he decides to make some of the changes uh, or adjustments or something that uh, I had felt were pretty solid as an idea. In any event... Um, Maybe we just see more maps, right? And then there's more uh, maps that are contenders for that sort of thing. The Droleth has arrived, and Nablime has learned his lesson. He will be building a stockade first. Now, this time around, I feel like Hamster's already enjoying the fact that his early aggression has doled out some success nice and early in the set. So he, you know, wins a close game one, 
And Nublime actually commented on the video saying that he felt like it was really, really lost for a long time. But actually, it was uh, pretty reasonable and looked a lot closer than it, than it felt in game. And I commented that that feels kind of like just normal Terran vibes. Like, if the enemy is still sending units at you, you're going to feel like you're losing. But in actuality, you're in a pretty good spot. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. It looks like the Droleth uh, gave the uh, Mason the slip and is going to escape with... Uh, two attacks worth of, uh, two mason attacks worth of health there. The macro hatch in the base is going to allow Hamster to get a lot more uh, units and or workers, you know, military and or, uh, you know, uh, workers or whatever. Right now it's just workers. And because he's, you know, going up against a blime, and because he just went for a pretty fast uh, pool, I think it was like a nine pool or something, he's already gotten a blime feeling a little bit scared. And so he slowed down his opponent's uh, macro where now Nublime was harvesting gas, so he could afford a Cyprian, thinking it could be a, a pretty fast push. And then he gets there, and there's a macro hatch, and a Quasith pool was, like, just now putting down as the Mason itself popped. So uh, we are going to see a pair of Zethra cores. That's probably just going to chase away the Mason while he sends a worker out to take his natural. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if the Mason will successfully block the hatch, uh, hatch placement. It looks like it will. It just narrowly managed to get it done. So that's going to be mildly irritating, but here come the Zeths to uh, chase it away. And so that will uh, that will do it. That'll do. He's, uh, he's going to try to give it a love tap on the way. Looks like uh, Nablime's more interested in scouting to see if uh, there's any gas being harvested, to see if there's potential for gnats. And indeed, there uh, is a single pair of Nathra cores coming. Uh, so that was actually a fairly useful scout for Nablime, because now he knows whether or not he needs to build a watchdog. Although, I'm not actually sure what the theory on this would end up being. Like, would you prefer to just account for the fact that maybe you are going to get naffed and build, like, a watchdog or an anchor or somewhere? So just add more, you know, anti-air units in general and uh, guard it. And then bring your mason back home so that he can eventually contribute to the mining. Because, like, over a lifespan of a single mason, they get way more than 100 minerals, which is what the watchdog is. Uh, so they definitely pay for themselves. Now, the Zets are uh, trying to dodge these Cyprian shots, and they will actually get in and start softening up the Masons. This actually could mean a little bit more than you might take a, give it credit for initially. Uh, he's even going to go ahead and try to attack the Cyprian, and he should actually pick off the Cyprian here. That's not so good for Nablime's reaction time. I feel like maybe he's, uh, I don't know, it's, he's upside down. You know, he's uh, he's not tilted, but like maybe t maybe 180 degrees tilted i don't know Some something's going on there and it's it's not just because he's from australia oh it's because he was doing this oops somehow i missed this whole thing now i feel like artosis talking and then missing in this case it wasn't a drop it was just a straight up harakan so yeah never mind that actually doesn't matter at all he's killed almost all of the hamsters workers he's lost two and a cyprian back at home and you know i was wondering where all the money was going so i guess that must have been proxied over here judging by the uh, the scout path yeah, man, I'm not on my game today for missing that one. I, it's probably because this is before I banned this particular tint of color on this tile set. Uh, I banned it in the very next version of pre-release uh, after this one consequently was played. And you can see why. <laughs> so uh, maybe that's why Hamster didn't respond either. Imba color, honestly. Okay, well, obviously Nablime should be way far ahead now. Mining from this is going to be not very efficient. I don't even know if he's going to be allowed to get it anymore. He might have assumed it was actually a drop when it was, in fact was not. And there's an anchor with two Cyprians in it. So I think as soon as these units come across and, and get uh, you know, matched with that, he's probably going to feel pretty bad. Uh, because these units could have stayed home and killed this stockade before it uh, stocked additional men. Uh, but yeah, he's already uh, starting to take some bruising. There's uh, three Cyprians firing off. Two of them are in the anchor. He's going to charge forward to try to dismantle the worker line, but does that really matter? I think at this point, Hamster is going to know it's over for him. Ahmed reigns supreme and gives Nablime a dub. Not bad. Well, he's the same color again. Actually, he's glacial, which is slightly even worse. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my best to really keep an eye on the minimap this time around. Uh, because that's all you can do. When life gives you Nablimes, you miss stockades that are lifted into the base. That is one of his favorite tricks. He did almost win a game in the grand finals of Ascension 5 with that very trick. So you have to give it to him. He is consistent. And that's actually something that I think Hamster will be able to use against Nablime. Uh, the, the ways that Nablime has historically won games versus top players in CMBW has unfortunately for him, and I don't mean this to sound demeaning, but it has been a little bit on the cheesier side or maybe the um, unexpected side. 
uh, and uh, the, the meta breaking side, and then you figure out a, a way to defeat it, and the fundamentals seem better for some of the other players. Now, I'm not going to put Hamster in the pool of other players just yet, because Shambler wasn't able to do it against Sublime, uh, be it against his Terran or, or his Zerg. And Mystery Me has been able to, by comparison, pretty handily. If it's a macro game, it seems like Mystery Me wins. Although I think Nublime has been improving in that part, especially as he gets more familiar with the project, which he has been playing a lot of games of lately. So you have to hand it to him there. And I can't really give Hamster credit for that until he really proves it. But I do think it's really cool that he's already taken a number of matches against him. I do think he looks pretty strong. He did take a ZVZ against Mystery Meat on Otherworld in the group stage, and that looked really cool to me because I thought maybe he would just end up outclassing Moonhunter and go for like the 2 2 thing where he loses both games against Mystery Meat and then loses, uh, you know, or wins both games against Moonhunter, and that's that. And maybe Moonhunter could actually be the banana peel where, you know, maybe they go for a, a crazy tie game or something and have to win the best of three. The, the, uh, the qualification best of three, as I usually end up calling it, where one player goes under defeated however uh at this stage it looks like mystery meat is doing all right you know for himself despite end up losing that uh, that first match in the group stage so he's uh, he's looking pretty solid I, I still have to give it to him overall although he, there's definitely a lot of variance there so uh you know i just look at the strength of the group and i basically weigh that in for seating the first scout for hamster is dealt with you know come to think of it that scout really annoyed Nublime a lot more last game. I wonder if, like, the very first part of the game while I was busy talking about stuff was when the Mason moved across the map and built the stockade in the corner or something. I wonder if it was that early, because there was a lot of Achmeds there. And I just totally fucking missed it the entire time. So that's pretty funny. I mean, all you can do is just keep on going, so it's not like it's going to end the video. But it is pretty, uh, you know, it's amusing to me that that ended up happening. So it looks like now, uh, you know, I thought the whole time Nublime was, like, playing a little bit spooked because Hamster just uh, sp spocked them, you know, with a, all of the, essentially like the, the Vulcan death touch, right? It's just insta-death. So uh, it's not even called a death touch, but I don't remember what it's called. I'm not a Trekkie, so I shouldn't have said spocked. Maybe I should have just said slapped, spanked, smashed. Either way, some S word was used. Uh, you could say shit on, I suppose. Uh, that's what that first, uh, or second game, the first game of this video uh, ended up doing. So, you know, I thought he was just playing spooked. It turns out he was actually spooking me. Ghost in the night. Can't even see his color on the minimap. This one's actually... I, you know, I said earlier that this one's worse than the last one. I actually think this one's a little bit easier looking at it now, so... <laughs> whoop de doo And, uh, yeah, I guess a general comment. You can post comments in below if you feel like uh, it's actually more annoying to play on ice maps than uh, other tile set maps. Because I, I feel like this is kind of a split decision amongst the community. You can see hamster scouting around, looking around. Uh, every snow pile could actually be a stockade in disguise, especially on the minimap. Don't look at the minimap. Um, yeah, so it's just one of those things where I know some people say that there's a lot of eye strain. And I feel like, um, obviously right now we have the recolor on, and on the actual tournament we don't. So uh, maybe take a look at the group stage games of Ascension, uh, number six, and tell me there. Uh, but overall, I feel like it's not too bad. At least for me, maybe it's my monitor calibration. I don't play with Flux on or anything, and I don't have any changes to, like, color vibrance. I know Counter-Strike players uh, love to fuck around with their NVIDIA settings and stuff to just increase visibility for that. So maybe if you play an FPS or, or anything like that where that's a common practice, common enough practice, maybe that would really hurt your eyes because you're, like, burning your retinas out with the brightness anyway. But honestly, in some ways, you should be used to it, so... I have no idea. Now, uh, I was told by, or I, I remember reading or hearing, uh, maybe Artosis explained this in a video, and I've seen this in forum posts as well. And then Azrakor's just uh, spotting the army. Uh, a bit of a panic pull there. Definitely wasn't necessary. Not sure what that was all about. Uh, but uh, obviously it's not going to result in too much of a lost window of mining. Uh, but yeah, the uh, something that I remember hearing in, Art in, Art in an Artosis cast, that was a hard thing to say, is... When you're watching a map and Protoss warp in a structure, it actually hurts your eyes because they uh, index it differently. So we've actually changed that in CMBW. It's all the same. Uh, and, and like as far as we're concerned, that was essentially a bug. So we fixed that part. As Orcus Shroud is coming, Hamster has shown a predilection for uh, Ovaleth into Lachizalisk and just uh, dropping like two Lachizalisks here and two Lachizalisks up here. He did try that maneuver against Mystery Meat. And I think with a little bit of a uh, of uh, you know improved micro, he absolutely could have taken that game, and then he basically would have been a lock for first place out of the group, which would have been really cool. Uh, but that storyline did not occur. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil that one out right out for you. 
And instead, it's not even going to be Lakizilisks this time. He's going to experiment with Gorgacores, or maybe I should, shouldn't should necessarily say experiment, because it might actually be legit. We have a Starpad training a Trojan, a fourth Stockade coming. One of them has a Vestry, and of course, we've got a stack of Maverick Cleric. We've got uh, two Mavericks and a Cyprian in there, and of course, an Achmed standing tall. Get some idle workers here, because why not? And it looks like he's going to go ahead and add more watchdogs, worried about air. I wonder if uh, maybe he... Oh, no, it's because his Anseal walked over here and got slapped by the Gorgs. Well, that explains a lot. So instantaneously going to be going for that. Now, there's only the uh, Cyprian, as well as a Harakin, funnily enough, in the uh, situation for the Quasis. I think the Anchor... Oh, the Anseal was pretty clutch there uh, and uh, allowed the Masons to get there on time. So that's really good. But the watchdogs were going up mostly in the natural... Whereas the Gorgs are now uh, wandering off over here. A Wraith did, uh, a Wild Wraith has appeared. Now the Gorgs were going to try to keep a tra tabs on their health. One of them's already very bruised. It does end up going down. Kind of feels like Hamster is a little bit directionless with how he wanted to use those units. At least the way that he positioned them. He obviously did want to bust this anchor, but that's where the Gorgs would really have shined. And instead of using them for that purpose alongside the Quasis, he wound up going a little bit of a different angle. And now he's sort of like walking directly in on top of the anchor. The uh, Anseal has been burst down, so that's actually not a bad pick for mineral-only units. And there goes the bust through the Masons, because obviously the Gorgs were dealing splash damage anyway, so some of those Masons ended up dying. And now the Quasis are kind of just, like, running away because there's a supreme amount of Mavericks here, and so Hamster will have to fall back. What's he been doing in the interim, right? I think Lakizilisks, they obviously would have had limited efficacy because there was already an Anseal on the field. But they certainly could have been a good option. And there was no expansion behind this. The Nats are still guarding the 9 o'clock position. But Hamster is only now going to be taking the 5 o'clock base. Or 5.5 if you want. That's the third. And that's exactly where these uh, Mavericks are coming. And the high ground has not been claimed. So it looks like Hamster is going to jockey his units out towards the uh, outer edges of his natural. And I guess Nablime is fine to not attack that base. He's going to go ahead and stem, move backwards. That will confirm the scout on it. There is a Gorg here, which does need to watch its positioning, and there's no other melee to sort of uh, draw the fire. Absolutely, this is a situation where Hamster should be moving forward because the Hatteras can be stemmed down. It looks like the Lakizilis took a little bit to Burrow there. That's definitely a little awkward because they we improved the responsivity of Burrow, so I feel like Hamster was actually floundering there a little bit. Made it look like we hadn't improved it. And now another stem comes out. More stems coming. Hatteras is around uh, 500 HP. The Quasis are taking a lot of the damage. A Trojan is here but it's empty looking to maybe elevator some of these uh, mavericks away into safety and perhaps into the uh into the main hurricanes come down from the top rope there's two more actually four more coming and it looks like instead yeah two mavericks two clerics that's actually not going to be enough to really do too much damage so Nablime is just going to fall away withdraw the remaining hurricanes and indeed we will have ourselves no Ahmed clones one in 256 chance to be Ahmed. All right, the uh, Hatcherosk is indeed coming. Macro hatch in the natural. That's going to go up to six hatches. And he's going to start maxing out his uh, worker count there, trying to saturate. There was no additional base constructed in the meantime. The ministry is coming now. There's some more outer watchdogs for any Gorg play. Some Nats are just going to go ahead and check this area because I think Hamster probably would have suspected a third would be up by now, but it isn't. Not just yet, anyway. He does scout that there's uh, Trojans and a lot of Harakans, so that should immediately tell him that he needs to position some Lakizilisks, maybe like two in each mineral line or something like that, and that can absolutely uh, dismantle Harakan drops, but it's also a lot of money. And the other thing I'm kind of like trying to keep tabs on here is like how much gas mining is being done. It doesn't really look like too much. He's only now setting up workers at this base, and many of them are idling. The others have been turned into uh, Kagrin Seasians. Now, the other thing, as the uh, we're sort of checking around out here, there's a cleric and a wraith over there for some reason. The drops were being assembled. The Anseal's out here uh, all alone, and they, these units are just going to fly over and see that Hamster's actually amassing for an attack, or at least some sort of containment. Now, this ministry isn't done yet, and it looks like the Atlas is only halfway done. Here comes the burrow. And there's going to be an attempted uh, unload, but I feel like with all those Lakizilisks, that might have not been the best move. You could have probably just pressured across the map instead with those Harakans and maybe gone for something a little bit more uh, definitive about firepower, right? There's no crowd control here whatsoever, aside from the Harakans, and that is going to force the blind. It's called GG. So now we have a situation where, aside from that little cheesy start to that past game that we uh, entirely missed, thanks to colorblindness and incompetence, uh, we can now say that uh, Hamster is looking pretty solid in this set. Let's see what's coming next. 
All right, this will be the last game of the video. There's a couple of additional games to be played after this. I think there was a total of uh, either six or seven. Let's go ahead and confirm. Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, we are looking at a situation where uh, this is going to be the, not the penultimate game, but the, the penultimate penultimate game, if that makes any sense. There'll be another video later on in the week with uh, the subsequent two matches. So we have a Mango Zerg in the bottom right and a Glacial Terran in the top left. I promise you this is not the same game as before because Hamster was Dark Spring Green last time. He will be seven pulling. And I feel like maybe it's a good thing that we picked this game, not to open the next series, but to close this one because I believe this will end up just being a uh, bona fide rush. Now, I did end up making adjustments to six and seven pulls in a way, I mean, not specifically to them, but I increased the t build time of the Quasith pool by five seconds. And I just feel like that gives you a little bit more wiggle, wiggle room to get your defenses in order if you end up scouting it. Uh, you might scout the units, they'll be five seconds later out of the eggs, right? Uh, and Quasilisks being slower as well is actually a pretty big boon here. Uh, because they do, I didn't change their efficacy versus workers, I gave them one armor pen. But the fact that they're slower now means that they actually need a little bit more time to get across the map. So, Quasith Pool is incoming, it will just about pop, and that will mean that we're going to be seeing... I want to say these will end up being Zethercores, and indeed that seems to be the case. So it's going to be a six, six uh, Zethercores, right? Three pairs. Stockade is done, the scout is on the way, and it's going to be two Mavericks immediately queued up. So... The, what that tells me about Nablime's style here is he's not going to do the one Maverick into Expand. He has done that versus Protoss in the past, in uh, actually in tournaments. So a very, very e economic build. And it looks like the Zeths are going to take the same path as the Scout. Now, that is something that you can try to do uh, to uh, change things up a little bit. Uh, one, you know, two more shots would have killed that Mason. You know, that wouldn't have been terrible, but I suppose you can show him the follow-up. Uh, they are not on a, an attack move here, and I'm not actually sure that Nablime paid any attention to that. So he sees... A very, very fast pivot out of Hamster. He is going to have an Achmed in time. He's pulling some of the boys off the line such that they can uh, help guard things. And you can, of course, try to repair the Harakan. I feel like this push might actually just get decided based on that. There are no additional uh, units coming. There's no additional military coming. It's just going to be the eight Zeths. And that's actually going to be a pretty big deal. So I think he's, he's, he's considering how he wants to do it. He's going to start attacking one of the Masons. It does get blown up before it can be repaired. He's now going to cycle out some of the wounded Zeths. And it looks like the Hurakan is going to end up inside the anchor. Which, if Hamster was aware of, would actually tell him, hey, I can just charge on through. Either way, it looks like this wounded mason is going to make its way over here. And I'm kind of expecting it to build another proxy stockade or something. Uh, I think it did scout that the Hatrosk was down. And it's just going to be all workers for the time being. Meanwhile, we do have a Zethercore peering its way over here. Not 100% sure what that's all about. Maybe it doesn't want to, you know, have the uh, anchor drop down on the other side or lift off or spotting for air units. Either way, it's good to have some presence over there. Hamster could obviously be attacking this mason and killing it since it only has two hits on it anyway. He will scout that a ministry is on the way if he can uh, place that based on the structure. We have more uh, drillets coming. I think the fact that uh, Nablime has scouted that is actually really huge for him because he knows that he's uh, essentially out of danger, right? Now, uh, this kind of normalizes, but it will take a little bit for Hamster to catch up in terms of workers. Uh, we changed the worker supply counter, basically, to make, to take into account units inside eggs. So this is not 18 active workers. This is actually 16 active workers with two on the way. Uh, obviously, I preferred the old method, uh, personally, because I feel like it's a lot easier to keep track of what the current level is. Particularly when workers actually cost more time, right? It actually takes more time. Uh, Veek petitioned for that change, and I felt like it wouldn't make a huge enough difference to, uh, you know, sort of bother arguing against, but it was something that I was expecting uh, would maybe cause some shenanigans or some confusion. Uh, but, you know, we'll just adapt to it. We'll have to check the number of eggs and stuff. Eventually, I know that they're in the StarCraft II uh, community, they made some sort of change to the replay viewer at some point, where they actually showed you icons of, of things over the eggs. Although I think they only did this for tournaments. I don't think they actually did this for the game itself. Or maybe you have to, like, install an add-on or something. Uh, and they also showed it for, like, units that were um, constructing... Uh, structures that were constructing units. Like, they, if you... It was a... Uh, uh, Maverick coming out of the stockade, pretend it's actually blinking, uh, then you'd see that. Uh, you'd see the star pad icon over the star pad construction site, etc, etc. Maybe we can do something like that for uh, witnesses and replay viewers. Uh, that wouldn't be too bad. And now that I've said it in a video, maybe uh, DF or Veek or somebody else will say, hey, well, that, that would actually be pretty cool. Uh, anyway, uh, being able to do something like that would be nice. The only concern I would really have is if it's like stacked, uh, you know, basically eggs stacked on top of each other. I guess maybe larvae shouldn't collide with eggs. Maybe that would actually fix a lot of issues. <laughs> anyway, the gnats are here. 
Stimmed on, a watchdog shot. It's going to help clean them up, but he does get the star pad in construction. So that's going to be pretty useful for him. Obviously, the uh, natural is up for both players now. Hamster still lagging behind in terms of workers. He's uh, adding a fourth macro hatch, and of course, he does have a circuit on the way. But now that he's scouted the star pad, he should be aware that the uh, potential, there, there is potential for some sort of aggressive move. I feel like Hamster should try to expand uh, since he's, but he, you know, he's, he's just now been focusing a little bit more on, on economy. We did see him order up a, a bunch of workers, so he will soon be on par with Nablime's Mason count. And that is an achievement un unto itself. Obviously, if you're Zerg, maybe a little bit less so. Uh, but Nablime really likes his Masons. Nablime really enjoys building workers. So if you can match his worker count, then I think you've done something pretty neat. Anseal on the way. A second Cleric to join the... I believe that is uh, six Mavericks, indeed. Nathagor gets shot out of the sky. Hydrath then coming out to the natural. Interesting. So, you know, we have seen Hamster... Try to use things like the, uh... We've seen him use, like, the mass skip pole and stuff. So, actually, obviously, Nablime is going to see that that structure is indeed a Hydra then. Can't really stop the Ed Seal with, uh, Quasis. They move too slow now. Pardon my yawn. A bit late in the day when I'm recording this. Should have done it a little bit earlier, but here we are. Maybe then I would have caught that ridiculous proxy. And then, as soon as I said that, I reminded myself that ridiculous proxies could occur. And I immediately scanned the whole map. Atlas on the way here for Nablime. Some people have raised concerns about Tier 2 units. Uh, in particular, I guess some of the units to watch out for, I suppose, are the Calculisk, the... Oh, maybe that's it. No, I, I guess everything else is technically Tier 3. I was thinking, like, the Engram Solarium. Uh, that stuff is Tier 3. Adding more uh, production here. We've got a Fulcrum and a Stockade coming. Oh, I guess the other one was technically the... the uh, the Madrigal. These gnats are getting stuck here. That's a little unfortunate for Hamster. Looks like he was responding to the presence of the Anseal scouting his third. Does have some Hydras. So it looks like he's going to go Hydra. Interesting. He's not going to be too interested in going for Skits. This kind of tells me he wants a military defeat of Nablime's forces as opposed to trying to like harass him and tickle him to death. At least for now. We're going to have to see how that one looks. Now there's that sort of charging on in. I think Hamster's actually been pretty good about sending a couple of units here and there just to check Nablime's army position. Uh, he could have actually used those deaths to maybe, like, burrow on the extremities uh, away from the anchor range. So even if the Ansel did reveal them, he was still kind of safe. Uh, but, you know, kind of makes sense. Now, there's uh, some other stuff happening behind here. We do have a Palladium coming, Ministry for the third, and a Starport now that the Atlas is done. It's definitely going to be a big deal. Yeah, the Madrigal has been revised. The Calculus has been tweaked. The Solarian has been tweaked. The Engram has not. Uh, but that is the sort of roster and retinue so far as far as uh, pre-release changes are going sentinel has a, a bandy new graphic but it's not going to be uh, not the, the sentinel itself the uh, projectile graphic has been changed thanks to something that df rendered out like i think a day before or maybe the day of the tournament uh the group stage so that was kind of neat that i was able to just charge on in there and immediately add it uh but uh yeah it won't be in this video of course these were played some time ago that's going to be the sixth hatch here for Hamster, he's got a triple Kagrin, looking like a campaign mission over here. Let's see what he decides to turn these into. It looks like Circith, Spraith, and that one can stay a Kagrin, apparently. Wraith was revealed by yet another Zethercore that was sent across the map. We've got a Quasilisk now marching over. And uh, I think that's going to indicate to Hamster that, yeah, there's probably going to be some kind of attempt at taking a third. A Phalanx is out to try to hold it. A Commandment coming from the Starport. Quasilis just hanging out over here for now. Hydra's rotating around. Now, I don't think any evidence of the starport has actually been sighted. In fact, I'm not even sure if evidence of Tier 2 has been sighted just yet. But I'm sure that Hamster is aware of it as an option. Anseal sort of caught between a uh, Spraith and a Hard Hydra. No Tier 2 coming just yet for Hamster, although he is pretty close in terms of gas. And he may consider uh, falling back as the additional Sentinels are coming online at this third. I feel like this uh, Hydra stack could actually do some damage because there's a timing here where these two Sentinels were not actually on operational. He could have maybe charged in, thinned the herd, maybe tried to commit onto the Anchor and the Phalanx uh, while these were uh, still incomplete. But it looks like he's going to hold off for now. Isaira cores do get penetrated by the Sentinel, so he is not going to be able to shrug those off just yet. And the Iral Iris is... No, that's not the Iral Iris. He spent some gas before he could actually afford it. So, looks like we're going to be engaging away from the Sentinel right now. Nablime might live to regret that. 
Hydras are going to indeed charge on forward. They do shred the bio, uh, but the bio did its job of, you know, essentially uh, buying enough time and distance here for the Phalanxes and the Sentinels to kill everything else. Right, we got five kills on the Sentinel, six kills on the Phalanx, three kills on that back Sentinel somehow. Now, these units are a little bit further away than they need to be. That's going to be one Phalanx down for pretty much nothing, just the Izzy so far. We do finally have a little bit of focus fire here coming out from Hamster. He will pop uh, Cyprian and another Phalanx. It looks like that Anseal was just a little bit too late to save that one Cyprian. And uh, the rest of these are indeed going to uh, be just a-okay. -okay. The Sentinels leapfrogging forward, another base being taken at 12 o'clock for Neblime. And uh, yeah, not really anything else. A Seraph on the way. Of course we have an Anvil building a Morningstar. That's going to be at the Nat, where we've got a capped Geyser in the Natural, another one on the way in the main. So I feel like Neblime's looking pretty good for a macro win. He is going up against a player who doesn't really have a lot of air units at their disposal to try to find and destroy the Seraphs that are nuking. He does have some Hydras over here. And these Hydras could not be Bactyls just yet because the Hyrule is only halfway done. A seventh hatch coming for Hamster. Uh, actually, technically an eighth because he has the base at three o'clock. But yeah, I feel like Neblime's tech is just going to be too damn good compared to uh, Hamster's for so long. I feel like this base is easy to shut down. The Hydras are nowhere in sight. There's like one Quasi here. Could not possibly tickle it to death. Uh, we do have more Hydras sort of rallying up into the choke between the third and the natural and some zets are going to be uh, moving over towards that third once again just to get shut down we do have some defenses coming online over here the seraph will finally be tasked over here now that it's uh, morning star is ready and there goes the nuke hamster now looking around his bases doesn't see anything in the natural doesn't see anything in the main pans the camera over and does indeed see it right to the left of the geyser there surely surely he sees it yep he's gonna pull his workers a little bit late but it's gonna be just fine i don't think he'll lose any of them ends up just losing the circuit there the seraph is now going to move on forward this is still a bit of a death spot the seraph will obviously uh pop in over here and get absolutely ass blasted by the irradiate of course bodied now the uh, workers cannot really return to mining over here just yet a big attack was attempted but it doesn't look like it was super successful over here. Uh, I'm judging by what I'm seeing, it looks like it was just a bunch of uh, Harakans, and some workers did indeed get uh, pulled away and killed. Circuit's finished in the meantime. I wonder if any air units went along with that fight. I don't see any rubble over there. Hard to say. Seraph is uh, over here getting bopped. Another irradiate went off and killed, like, it looks like five workers. And these Hydras are also going to die. Ugh. Well, here comes 18 more workers to fully saturate this base. The Wyverns are here, but they will, of course, be bopped by Hydras. Nothing too bad. They killed yet another worker. The Blime is ahead of his opponent in terms of workers. He's got five Watchdogs, six Watchdogs at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, much less convincing anti-air at the third, and indeed at the uh, natural as well. There is an anvil armed and ready. By the way, DF, if you see this... If you can tell me why there's no, uh, no space there, that would be lovely. I don't know why the tooltip for the, the Morningstar does not actually have the space. Obviously, that should also say missiles instead of nukes, but whatever. Sentinel over here being uh, tickled to death from the high ground. These units could move in a little bit faster. I really don't think Hamster is going to want to commit with 12 mutas into a base with so many watchdogs, even though some of them were shuffling around. And you can see here now, he doesn't even kill a single watchdog. Finally, the second Sentinel does fall. But there's two more where that came from. And uh, there's an Azazel and a Seraph combo. The Mutas are nowhere nearby, so I think this base will also end up getting slapped around a little bit here. And Hamster is just going to be divided. There's a lot going on in this match that maybe he wasn't ready for. We do have double ga uh, Kaffir loss coming. That's obviously going to allow him to mutate tier 2 units directly. Or I guess uh, I should say unit morphs directly, right? So if you uh, technically like the Vorvacor is tier 1, but it's still a unit morph. And, of course, technically the Alcadulus is tier 3. It's also still a Unimorph. So we'll see how that one works out. A Wraith just uh, moving on to the bottom of the map. And right now we've got uh, even bases, even-ish workers. And I said it earlier, there's not really a crazy amount of anti-air over here. We do have some Cyclops out. It looks like the Anvil is just going to be the target here. I don't know if I agree with this from Hamster, because obviously it is going to blow up his own uh, Mutas. Apparently he thought that was a, a good enough trade, or at least he wanted to commit to it. 
you know, maybe he just wants to see it in action. Now, there's an army of Phalanx, Vulture, Harakin, and then I think, like, two Cyclops? Three Cyclops. Which, by the way, Nablime doesn't like at all as a unit. Meanwhile, there was a nuke strike in the 3 o'clock position. Uh, the Seraph blindly walked into the Irradiate field and just got absolutely executed. The Azazel uselessly watched on. And, uh, yeah, they, we have, again, a couple of Cyclops, a couple of Cyprians, maybe eight, one Cyprian. So even just a small number of mutas here can absolutely wreak havoc on this army. But don't worry, the hero Cyclops. You know, obviously the thumbnail for this video has to be Cyclops are incredible, Cyclops are unstoppable, Cyclops are amazing. And, uh, you know, yeah, why not irradiate your own units? You didn't need that Phalanx, that Vulture, that Harakin, that Mason. Uh, that other Vulture. Yeah, you didn't need any of that. That's fine. Mutas are coming, but you're frontlining with your uh, not frontline, your Cyclops. You got a frontline with Achmed instead. I still think that the Mutas are liable to get bopped here, but unfortunately none of the Cyclops received the defensive matrix from the Azazel. I finally was able to fix the bug with the Azazel energy regen, by the way. Love to just advertise that the, the game was bugged for years, but yeah, we fixed it. A couple of irradiates just to uh, slap some of these units down. We got the Hydras over here, just standing vigil. This base slowly coming back online. Despite losing a big chunk of his army there, Nablime is still pretty far ahead economically. He could absolutely continue to choke out the map. He could try to take this base at three o'clock and it looks like, I feel like maybe he just sent a unit over there specifically to do that. Not sure if that's actually true. We got Valkyries out. We got Muta, Muta Zethracor and some Hydra. Dude, this is classic Starcraft right here. I like this. Just a single Phalanx and two Cyprians and an Anchor are not going to really be able to hold this off. Achmed comes up to help. There's some Madrigals and some Cyclops, and they will absolutely assist in this fight. Particularly when there's so many Madrigals that all of the Mutas end up getting absolutely eviscerated. So it looks like a Phalanx was lost. Irradiates went haywire, but that is going to be enough for Hamster to call GG. He doesn't feel like he can come back from that situation. He committed pretty heavily into that, and the Blime will take another game. And you can't really call it tying it up, but he's getting closer. And we still have two games to play, and that will decide for sure which one is the better Cosmonarchy Brood War player on the day, on this map, on this patch, etc., etc. But hey, it's worth something. Will it be enough to decide whether or not Hamster will move on with this exact scoreline against Nublime when they play, assuming they do play in playoffs later on in the upper semifinals, perhaps? Yeah, maybe, perhaps. I don't know. It depends. Oh, got him. All right, see you guys later.